What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? It's your boy Kevin to turn on this motherfucking YouTube shit. What's up? What's up? What's up? It's sh your boy. Terry to turn on YouTube shit. Ain't that the same man? We are lit, eh? Lit 13, man. Turn, 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 turn. Today, I'm up here in Dayton, straight hood and outside crib, man. Alright, gang. Kevin two turn, man. Out here, man. In the hood. And outside, man. Crippin', man. Hey, man, send I hope y'all enjoy these videos, man. Um, uh, Make sure y'all. Like, subscribe, keep on fucking with your boy, man. You know what I'm saying? You keep on putting in that work, man. The grind don't stop, man. Turn, 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 man. Like, subscribe, and, and fuck with your boy, man. You know, we on a movement, man. We, we doing big teams out here, man. You know what I'm saying? Non-stop, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, I know y'all been enjoying these videos. I know y'all been um, fucking with your boy. So keep on liking and subscribing. Like I've been saying in my videos, we not paying attention to none of the negative uh, entities that's been messing with your boy. We just gonna stay positive. Um, wish nothing but positive spirits to motherfuckers, man. Palestine, we find Congo, we find Russia, whoop Ukraine ass, we find man. I hope y'all um, like, subscribe, enjoy these videos. You know what I'm saying? Keep on fucking with your boy. You know what I'm saying? We gonna upgrade, man. We upgrading. New me, but the same old me. Upgraded. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I hope y'all get in tune, man, and understand. Hey, this finna get crazy, man. We finna do. We, we really finna put in that work. Y'all finna see some. Y'all finna see some shit, man. Y'all really finna, finna some, see some shit, man. So I hope y'all enjoy the video, man. Keep on, um, liking, and subscribing, man. Turn it with your boy, man. You know what I'm saying? You know we, hey, turn it. Northside legend to doing Northside shit, man. Really kicking shit, man. So I hope y'all enjoy this bitch, man. Let's get into this bitch. All right, boom. Oh yeah, come to this black kid is like, all right, boom. Today, the motherfucking day, straight hood outside crib. All right, gang. So we've been talking about this shit, man. Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon. A WWE, um, I think he one of the people who who um who 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 been running WWE. He was forced to resign from one of the WWE. I think from the platform of WWE, man. He was forced to resign for um allegations about sexual assault and other people in the organization of sexual assault you know what I'm saying man this is what I'm saying man white people man they do all this crooked ass shit and nothing happened to them until at the end of their career why don't get them why y'all don't get them when they up when they winning why y'all wait till they like 80, 90, done live up their whole career? You know what I'm saying? And it's like, bro, a nigga 90, nigga, he don't give a fuck about nothing no more. Nigga, he, he ready, he probably ready to die. You know what I'm saying? He 90. Nigga done lived a whole life of doing crazy shit. And y'all wanna get him when he like when he 90. That's the that's what I be saying, man. Why, see, y'all wait for these motherfuckers to get old and live their life and to, to try to take them out. When, when us black people, Hebrews, like when we do some shit, y'all going at our necks immediately. It don't matter how old we is. We could be motherfucking twelve, nigga. Y'all going at our necks. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, bro, you know, it's funny because you know, Vince and Matt. He got so much money on, and he been sexual assaulting these females. Uh, I guess, I guess they've been talking about boys too. And I bet the whole motherfucking WW fucking E knew about it. They didn't say nothing. All the motherfuckers was getting bought off, sold off, you know what I'm saying? And to, to be hush hush. And that's what they do, man. You know, they collect the bag. 
they rape all these motherfuckers, rob all these motherfuckers, and at the end of their career, they get caught up. But if that was a black motherfucker, that nigga would have been out the door immediately. It wouldn't have took no motherfucker until he 90 years old for anything. You know what I'm saying? This nigga, this motherfucker, white dude, a billionaire. He know he been paying off these motherfuckers to be hush hush. And I got these, I got the, the um, videos and stories about what's been going on in that situation, man. You know what I'm saying? This white man right here, man, been raping all these motherfuckers and paying off shit and nothing happened to him until he 90. They got probably accusations against motherfuckers. And they get them niggas out when they can. When they can. Nigga, bitch, they find out some shit. They try to get you out the next fucking day. These motherfuckers, they wait till this nigga 90 years old, barely just, barely can know what the fuck going on. He nigga done lived his good ass life. This nigga probably came from the Bahamas. Spent a million dollars. Which came from the Bahamas. Now they want to try to do some shit. Nigga, nah, it's too late, bro, y'all. That's what y'all do, man. Y'all wait until the time is up when niggas, when, when, when they already done, done live life. You know what I'm saying? That's weird, man. You know, but that's, that's what America, 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 America KKK is, man. You know, it's just some racist ass shit. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we finna get into this video, man. I hope y'all, um, Enjoy these videos, man. Share these videos, man. Get the message out. You know what I'm saying? If anything, get this message out. You know what I'm saying? These motherfuckers, this is what they be doing, man. You know what I'm saying? They they rape you, use you up, and, and yeah, that's what they do. They rape, they rape, man. This, this video, man, is wild, man. You know what I'm saying? But they don't, but the tension don't be on, on this shit. You know what I'm saying? People talk about, but they don't, bl the, the, you know, social media, they don't blow this situation. They blow up when we do some negative shit. But they don't blow up this situation. So, hey man, thank man. I hope y'all enjoy these videos, man. Make sure you like, subscribe, and get the video out, man. All right, gang. So this is the Vince McMahon sexual assault allegation. Do you believe that sexual harassment exists hey. in your workplace? I These believe white there's people a possibility away with of sexual shit, harassment man. existing everywhere. And I, I asked directly if it was in the very organization. I don't want it. Nothing wonder. happens. WWE boss Vince McMahon has resigned following sex trafficking allegations from a former employee. You may have heard about the shocking sex abuse lawsuit being leveled at Crazy WWE man. boss Vince they McMahon be, by a former employee. The scandal Wait. couldn't come at a worse time as the WWE shit. signed a massive caught. $5 billion deal with Netflix. So much is on the line. Everyone at the WWE has reportedly yeah, been told to not say a word. The Mexicans, the it's white people are doing the same the WWE thing. Becoming a publicly traded Not company, to to multiple allegations targeting McMahon directly, the right reporters at the right publication getting tipped off, and the revelation of undisclosed hush money payments to lead to his resignation in July of 2022. And with five new allegations trickling out throughout the second half of 2022 alone, it can be a lot to keep track of. So here's a primer that looks at all of the allegations of abuse Crazy. or enabling the abuse of others that have been levied publicly against Vince McMahon since 1992. Vince McMahon. And these are people they be trying to have over everybody to be doing all this shit. And don't and get away for in early 1992. Years. WWE, then Titan Sports, doing business as the World Wrestling Federation, was rocked by what the pro wrestling torch dubbed Titan Gate, which basically involved various sexual misconduct allegations on the heels of the brewing scandal about steroid abuse in the company. And at the center were Pat Patterson, who was head of racing operations, his right hand man Terry Garvin, and ring announcer and ring crew chief Mel Phillips, who worked directly under Garvin. The allegations at least broadly pointed to Patterson and Garvin engaging in a casting couch culture with male wrestlers and other personnel while also enabling Phillips to use his job to groom and molest underage ring boys who he brought in as day laborers on his crew. One story in Alicom was that uh, when uh, this, you mentioned this male... Dang, they're molesting uh, a little boy. <laughs> when he was caught with a young boy in a 
car. They talked to this young boy and said, why? Why, why, why are you allowing this? And he says, well, he says, I get to go to all the TV tapings here in Allentown of Hamburg, both, both, for free. I get to meet a lot of the wrestlers they introduced me to and even take pictures with a lot of them. All three resigned, although WWE later claimed that Phillips was initially suspended and only Patterson would return, likely benefiting from his greater value to the company and the discrediting of his most vocal accusers, namely Murray Hodgson, as well as superstar Billy Graham, who later recanted the claim that he saw Patterson grow an underage boy. And I saw Pat Patterson with his left arm on the kid's shoulder and his right hand in his crotch. I witnessed this for myself. What? Other more credible allegations against Patterson, like those from former ring boy Tom Cole, fell by the wayside as a result, while Garvin vanished from public life. We have been undergoing an investigation. Our investigation shows us that, again, if anything, there could very well have been some locker room horseplay. There was never anything, to our knowledge, that approached anything illegal or immoral. We don't tolerate that here in the world. I was grabbed on numerous occasions in my te- on my testicles and my buttocks by uh, Pat Patterson of the World Wrestling Federation. And uh, Terry Garvin propositioned me when I was 16 more for me cocaine and all kinds of drugs to uh, have sex with him. When I refused, I was let go from the company when I was 16. And then I returned again when I was 19. I was let go again because I refused Terry Garvin's advances. So Cole hired a lawyer and ended up with a $55,000 settlement to cover lost wages. However, just as the scandal started breaking publicly in March 1992, McMahon conceded to New York Post columnist Paul Mushnick that he had previously fired Phillips over his suspicion that, in Mushnick's words, Phillips' relationship with kids seemed peculiar and unnatural, only to rehire him again a few weeks later. Although McMahon sued Mushnick and the Post for defamation a year later, even citing other parts of the same article as defamatory, they never disputed his account of the conversation. Many of you know, several years ago, the World Wrestling Federation and I came under a vicious attack by the tabloid media, led by one Phil Mushnick of the New York Post. It's been the equivalent, in my view, of journalistic stalking. Former referee Rita Chatterton alleged that McMahon had sexually assaulted her in the limousine back in 1986. She also provided a much more detailed account on Rivera's talk show Geraldo a week later. According to Chatterton, she met McMahon in his limo where he forced himself on her twice, then fired her by invoking a rule he had previously mentioned about her not being able to fraternize with co-workers. When I couldn't complete his desires, he got really angry started ripping off my, my jeans, pulled me on top of him, and told me, again, if I wanted a half a million dollar year contract, I had to satisfy him. He could make me or break me, and if I didn't satisfy him, I was blackballed. That was it. I was done. When Vince was all said and done, Vince just sat back and said... At one point, when I first met Vince, let me back up here just a little bit. The very first time I met Vince, I was told that if I had any sexual relationships with anyone in the Federation, I was done. My career was done. I was engaged. I had no problem with that. When Vince was said and done, Vince looked at me and said, Do you remember what I told you about having sexual relationships with anyone? Well, you just did. And he just sat back and had this big smile and this big grin and just started laughing at me. McMahon would sue Chatterton as well as Rivera and his associates in February of 1993, albeit alleging a civil conspiracy as opposed to defamation, before dropping the suit a year later. Chatterton didn't breathe a word of the allegations publicly for the next three decades. In June of 2022, coming off of the initial Wall Street Journal article about McMahon settling sexual misconduct claims, Chatterton broke her silence in a New York Magazine article giving additional context while pointing to the Geraldo episode for the details of her allegations. But more newsworthy, though, was that Chatterton was now supported by another outcry witness, Mario Mancini, who went to racing school with her. No, and I, uh, shortly after that, I walked into an arena, and of course she was there, and you know, I went up to say hello to her by what nine, you know what I mean? We're out of the same school and we got close and she just started crying. 
I said, what are you crying for? And she goes, I, I wanted to talk to Vince and I got into his limo and I went, tell me you didn't do that. She said it was terrible and she told me a story and I said, you're done. You're through. You'll never work again. You're, you're done. And shortly after that, she was gone. On November 3rd, the same journal article reported that a lawyer for Chatterton sent McMahon a demand letter for $11.75 million, with McMahon pledging not to pay her. The letter said that the damages were hard to overstate, including years of ongoing depression, substance abuse, disordered eating, lost income, and an overall decreased quality of life. In addition, later that month, Chatterton gained the ability to sue McMahon for damages stemming from the alleged assault. Thanks to New York's Adult Survivors Act signed in May of 2022, which created a one-year window suspending the statute of limitations on civil sexual assault claims. In January of 1983, Superfly Jimmy Snooker, the then top babyface in the WWF, was arrested just outside of Syracuse, New York, on charges of assaulting his girlfriend, Nancy Argentino, as well as various law enforcement officers who responded to the scene. On May 11th, in Whitehall, Argentino died of a skull fracture, and the narrative would shift on and off over the next 37 years. But what really can't be disputed anymore was the fact that regardless of which version of his story Snooker told, he never claimed that anyone else was with them, and the coroner ruled the case a homicide. Despite the autopsy findings and Snooker never providing a story that could have accounted for someone else killing Argentino, the paper trail stopped cold after his second Whitehall police interview. There, Snooker was joined by McMahon, and unlike every other interview in the case, the investigating officer's report did not recount anything that was said. And for Snooker's part, he claimed in his 2012 memoir that McMahon entered the meeting with a briefcase and left without it. A year later, the prosecutor's office lied to the Argentino family lawyer and said that Nancy's death had been ruled an accident. WWE star Jimmy Snooker made a name with his flashy moves in the wrestling ring, but tonight he's out on bond in New Jersey accused of killing his girlfriend three decades ago. I was just watching John Schneider tonight speaking with the victim's sister, Johnny. And Bill, according to the criminal complaint, Jimmy Snooker told seven different versions of how his girlfriend died in just the first seven. day after her death. That was Brought up by the victim's family for 32 years, the DA finally submitted the case to a grand jury which voted to indict him for murder. The case was dismissed just days before his 2017 death, although this was basically stemming from him being ruled incompetent to stand it's trial. Like man, he probably be getting away with every fucking thing, man. It took over a decade after Titan Gates before Vince McMahon was accused of sexual misconduct again. This time coming the weekend of the 2006 Royal Rumble event. McMahon was then in Boca Raton, Florida, where he had a seasonal residence and went to a local tanning salon called Tanzibar to refresh his tan for one of the biggest shows of the year. There, the clerk would allege in a police report that McMahon showed her nude photos of himself unprompted and then forcibly groped her. And when she managed to get away, she said McMahon told her that he was only trying to have some fun. The Palm Beach Post broke the story a few days later with Vince's wife, Linda, telling them that the allegations were totally bizarre, while their daughter, Stephanie, confirmed that Vince was a Zanzibar regular. After a South Florida Sun Sentinel newspaper followed up about McMahon not being charged a month later, the story vanished for a dozen years. However, it was revived in January of 2018 when the Daily Beast unearthed the original report, revealing that police felt that there was now probable cause to charge McMahon. Uh, bro, this is wild. Oh, when they old as hell, they don't live their whole life charging. 2022's biggest wrestling news story kicked off on June 15th when the Wall Street Journal reported that WWE's board of directors was using an independent law firm to investigate a $3 million settlement that Vince McMahon paid a former subordinate months earlier. 
The investigation started in April after the board got a series of anonymous emails from someone claiming to be a friend of the woman in question who had worked for the WWE as a paralegal. And it had turned up additional settlements with other women. The paralegal had, according to the emails, gotten a 100% raise after beginning a sexual relationship with McMahon from $100,000 annually to $200,000. The emails further allege that Vince passed her around like a toy to then talent relations head John Laurinaitis, becoming his assistant in the process, with the situation further deteriorating from there. Meanwhile, a WWE spokesperson has stated that the relationship was consensual and it doesn't appear that anyone was arguing the relationship was not consensual in the criminal sense. Although in recent years, the collective mindset has shifted as to whether or not someone can fully consent to sex with their boss in the first place. The aforementioned second Wall Street Journal article, which came out on July 8th of 2022, painted a significantly more bleak picture of McMahon's alleged behavior as it revealed that three more of his settlements with former subordinates found by the board's investigation took the total amount to over $12 million, with one, a $7.5 million settlement accounting for the majority of that figure. That settlement went to a woman who the journal described as a former wrestler who alleged that Mr. McMahon coerced her into giving him oral sex and then demoted her and ultimately declined to renew her contract in 2005 after she resisted further sexual encounters. Of the settlements that were reportedly uncovered in the board's investigation, it's the only one where the allegation of sexual contact is framed as coerced, with the woman in question apparently suggesting that she did not fully consent. The settlement didn't come back in 2005 when the wrestler was fired, though it came in 2018 after the wrestler and her lawyer reached out to McMahon and negotiated the $7.5 million settlement in exchange for a non-disclosure agreement. That would place it just after the Me Too movement blew up in the wake of the reporting about Harvey Weinstein's misconduct in the New York Times and the New Yorker. And elsewhere in the July 8th story, the journal described the other two newly discovered settlements as being a woman who described herself as a WWE contractor who presented the company with unsolicited nude photos of McMahon that she said he had sent her, which pretty much echoes the tanning salon attendant's allegation previously, while also accusing him of sexual harassment more broadly. This resulted in a $1 million settlement in 2008. The other woman described herself as a former manager who had worked for over 10 years for Mr. McMahon before he allegedly initiated a sexual relationship with her where she was paid $1 million to keep quiet about it in a 2006 settlement. search winner Ashley Mazzaro, who died by suicide in 2019, his name also came up specifically when her ex-boyfriend, Paul London, accused McMahon of obsessively pursuing her while she worked under him in the WWE. But I do remember specifically many times when she would she would be crying to me because Vince was propositioning her to, to fly on the jet with them, like Kevin Dunn. Bucktooth Bucky would be uh, telling her that she has to fly on the jet with him, or that he might, you know, possibly, or every now and then, she was at the, you know, they'd always put the divas up at the TV hotel or whatever, you know, he'd be knocking on her door and, you know, trying to get her to answer, and it's just like, I'm shocked this Vince stuff is just now coming out. I mean, it, you know, I haven't looked up on a lot of it and like oh I want to get the details because I just I'd rather not but I'm surprised it hasn't come out within the last 10 years because he got a lot of money on it but it just goes to show how afraid people are of the power do. dynamic where they're so fearful of losing their job or you know it's like what does that say about you if you're protecting this 90 year old fucking corpse uh, with a thong ta- tan line, um, just because he's a billionaire. This woman alleges that in 
2011, when she was working as a spa manager, Vince McMahon sexually assaulted her at the five-star resort in Southern California, where she was working at the time. She also told her husband, which led him showing up at a WWE event with a baseball bat looking for McMahon, only to be turned away by security. The women involved in World Wrestling Federation, from China all the way down, are very, very strong-willed women who, generally speaking, at the end of the day in the soap opera, get what they want and then some. Now, in conclusion, with regards to all these allegations against Vince McMahon, you know, where there's smoke, there's generally fire. And in this case, there seems to be a shitload of smoke. Now, the one thing that interests me is that how many of these top-tier stars, like the... You know, the Dwayne Johnsons of the world, the Triple H's, Shawn Michaels, you name it. How many of these stars knew about what was going on? Because surely, you know, the logic dictates they had to be aware of something. And what does it say about them that, you know, if they knew and they did nothing about it? So that, that that's pretty interesting to me. I'm not that invested in the WWE. I watched it as a kid. Um, I've done a few segments with regards to the Chris Benoit murders as well as Owen Hart's death, which was handled in, in a very, I suppose, debatable way by the WWE and by Vince McMahon. But um, it's interesting. It'll be interesting to see what does happen in the end with regards to, to Vince, whether he gets prison time, or, you know, more than likely, he'll just pay everyone off as it seems like he's been doing since the 1980s. I'm just saying I make mistakes, obviously, you know, both personally and professionally through my 50-year career. I've owned up to every single one of them and then moved on. But in any case, let me know what you guys think in the comments. And Guys, what's going on? I'm Jada Black. Shout out to everybody that's on. And this could be added into the podcast files. Um or broadcast files that's, that's why the graphics look the way they look but i appreciate y'all being here i i've uh, i've been asked to speak about vince mcmahon resigning from tko or yeah, wwe or from resigning. both um he was on the board as you know he is a guy that has been the chairman of wwe for a very long time yeah. He purchased the company from his father back in the early 80s. We saw what he did with the company in front of the camera. But behind the, behind the scenes, the guy is a complete degenerate. And if you have watched the WWE product over the years, you saw that degeneracy make its way onto television. Mm. Look at a lot of his segments from the Attitude Era, post-Attitude Era, once WCW had folded and ECW had folded and he had basically purchased all the competition. I mean, go and look at the early to, early to mid-2000s and, and the type of things creatively that was being done. Uh, at the lead that Vince McMahon was, none of this should surprise any of you. If you listen to a lot of ex-WWE talent, you look at the story of Rita Chatterton. You look at the Jimmy Snooker story. You look at all the things that Vince has been accused of. You look at Vince McMahon's upbringing. You see a guy who just, he's a degenerate. And I'm not going to take away what he has built, but he's a degenerate that built this is crazy. up WWE into what it is today. WWE, yeah, we talk. can acknowledge what he has done, but we can also acknowledge that he's a complete degenerate. Yeah. This guy, as of 2020, <laughs> is doing some of the most insane things that you could possibly do as a CEO or chairman of a billion dollar company you look at the documents that that were exposed about one one vincent kennedy mcmahon you look at what this guy had did as of three years ago we're not talking about something 10, 15, 20 years ago. Because a lot of his defenders, and there's a lot of you weirdos 
who claim you're wrestling fans, but you're just WWE fans. You're 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 fans or stands of Vince McMahon. You defend anything WWE. You're you're looking past this, right? You're trying to make fun of their competition who put on a better product than they do, right? When really you need to look at what's in front of you and the fact that the guy who's been running that company up until now is a complete degenerate who used his position of power to get what to get uh, relations out of a out of a woman who he hired to work for him. This guy is a degenerate that built up WWE. You know, WWE they go. I became a wrestling fan. Back in the late 90s. It might have been late 97, early 98. I think it might have been late 97. I remember I first saw a commercial for WCW, right? I was like, oh, that looks interesting. It had Sting on it, right? But I remember I was channel flipping, and I flipped on to TNT when WCW Nitro was on. And I saw, I got to the latter part of that episode. And I think Sting came in and just cleared the ring. Hulk Hogan was there and he walked off. He was Hollywood Hulk Hogan then, right? Mm. And that intrigued me to come back and watch more. And then I saw that they had competition, so I would watch WWE. But I was first a WCW fan. Mm. And I saw... The Attitude Era, Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, you know, Stone Cold fighting against, yeah. the, you know, the his boss, right? Mm-hmm. Getting the one up on Vince. You know, that stuff was entertaining. Yeah, it was. All that shit was entertaining. And Vince oh, wow. is the boss from hell, right? You yeah, had Steve Austin minute, fighting man. against authority, right? Vince played his role well as a villain. But you, but it, it just seemed like he got worse and worse. Like he went from being like this cartoonishly bad boss to being a guy that was really? literally doing some of the <laughs> most degenerate up. things on camera, really including with his daughter Stephanie. Right? I know if you are a wrestling fan, you know that. This might have been, what, 2005, 2006? You know, mm. It was an episode where he said, what's up, my N-word? What? On live television. That's wild. Nothing Booker happened. T was right there. I think liked. he said it. John Cena was in that particular segment. Booker T and his wife. He got a lot of money on, man. Booker T, look, I know he didn't just say Fire. that. Bop, bop, bop. Yeah, he Ain't said that. Way. That's just the type of boldness that Vince had, right? He could get away with anything. As long as he had his attorneys, yep. he felt like... Because, again, he, he, he went through the trial, the steroid trial. The government went after him. He got through that. And I'm pretty sure... He, he's been sued numerous times for other things as well. When Vince has done interviews, he has not carried himself very well. You could see it underneath the surface that the guy was very arrogant and he felt like he'd get away with anything. But father time catches up with you. Mm. And I think the older Vince got, the stupider he got. (laughs) Damn. According to the documents, y'all can go and read it for yourself. It's everywhere. This particular woman Mm -hmm. that he had been dealing with, Janelle Grant, right? He basically brought her on and used his authority and power and money to coerce relations out of her. It got so bad that he even assaulted, this is according to the documents, Janelle Grant claimed that he had assaulted her at his offices at Titan Towers. This was right around the time of the pandemic. It was not only him, it was his buddy, Jim Laronitis, a.k.a. Johnny Ace. Or John Laronitis, excuse me. John Laronitis, a.k.a. Johnny Ace. They basically took turns on her at the offices. And I believe that there were people there who not only knew that Vince was taking advantage of this woman, because Vince bragged about it. Here you have this old, degenerate, semi-senile man, right, 
who wants to show that he still got it with the ladies, even yeah. though he's not telling people he has to coerce those ladies or lady. And they enabled Vince. And what's funny is that some of those same people who enabled him are still there. Go check out the press conference from uh, the Royal Rumble. Tells you everything you need to know. His enablers are still there. As a matter of fact, Ronda Rousey called out Bruce Pritchard, who I believe is still employed by World Wrestling Entertainment, TKO. They all enabled Vince. They all kissed his ass. Hmm. They knew what type of guy he was. They knew that there's probably worse out there. Because remember, he got sued by no, he got sued, no, he didn't get sued. Excuse me. He ended up paying off other women Damn. around the same time he was dealing with Janelle Grant. He paid what twelve to what fourteen million to numerous women that he had the same similar dysfunctional degenerate relationship with. And again, the same. A lot of those same people are still there. Now there are people, especially a lot of these WWE stands, who hate anything that isn't WWE. They worship Vince. They worship. A better banking app is. They think that it is over. It is not over. There are still enablers who are still there, and I don't think that I think there might be more women who come out. And they're not just going to go after Vince. They're going to go after WWE TKO. Because of the enablers who are still there. Who have not spoken out. Who are not going to speak out. And if they are, they're going to deflect, 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 deflect. Vince McMahon is a guy who should have been, you know, he should have been outed and gone a long time ago. Yeah. But, you know, you have the situation where I, I believe you have a power struggle that's going on there. And I believe there are forces there that wanted him gone because they wanted power. That's how it is. I remember when there was an ex WWE employee that sued claiming discrimination. They put all these different people in there except one person. This is man. <laughs> Who is right there every week, right? And uh, I think that case went nowhere um, because I think it was may, may have been baseless. Who knows? I just think that the culture there isn't any different. It might be worse. It's perception. And I honestly believe that for a lot of the great things that people say Vince did, he also did a lot of destructive things. Mm. He destroyed the territories. He bought up all his competition. He has ruined people. There are a lot of talent who said that, you know, Vince, you know, did not treat them the best. Mm. He's not the best person behind the scenes. We have to be able to look at it for what it is. This guy was a detriment to himself and everybody that he was around. This type of guy he is. So, uh, it's good that he's gone. I don't really think they need him anyway. They seem like a content creating uh, train. No matter who gets off, as long as you have a few people to to basically mm. keep it going, you, you know, you can even Vince himself can be let out of there. Kevin Dunn is gone. Mm. I just think that yeah, they, you know, we are only yeah, at the beginning of this. Shit, I think it could get a lot worse. Know. We in the lawsuit era. We are in the era of lawsuits, and I could definitely see more women mm. coming forward and suing not only Vince, but WWE TKO. Mm. So let me know what y'all think in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts, like this video, and share. Follow me on. All right, back. All right, gang. So if y'all see from that video, man, but they was doing crazy shit since they first started in that bitch. But I guess they had like 20 years worth of dirt on that nigga, man. You know what I'm saying? And what that female was saying. But you know, like, these females, like I said, you can never trust these females a hundred trillion percent on their stories. But you know what I'm saying? Man, these white people, man, we all know how they get down. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, it's weird because it's like, man, you know, that nigga had about 
three, four motherfuckers on, on who been saying that. Yeah, whoop the whoop. You know what I'm saying? And now, you know, when this nigga about 90, nigga delusional as hell. Nigga mind probably like a mush of fucking mashed potatoes. They like, yeah, get that nigga out the paint now. Yeah, nigga, you 90. Nigga, they don't need you no more. Nigga, you done built this whole fucking franchise the fuck up again. Nigga, they finna get some other clowns to do some shit. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, man, yeah, you make, you probably made WWE hella money, but, bro, still, you, the situation at, at hand, man, you know, it, man, if, 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 if we would've said, oh, WWE, that's a game, you know what I'm saying? Okay, then what? Oh, yeah, WWE, that's a game. Yeah, it's like, man, y'all can, y'all can say shit against black people with, like, a label or some shit and say it's a game, but then these niggas doing some, some crazy ass shit, sex trafficking, all types of shit, and, and they wait till this nigga's 90, they been talking about this shit for 20 years, they been talking about this nigga been raping and doing all types of shit, niggas been dying and shit, they been talking about this shit for 20 years, and nothing been happening, you know what I'm saying, I'm just, I just, I just, I just can't stand and sit here and watch, you know what I'm saying, when shit like this is just, Happening, you know what I'm saying? I'm just, I just, I was never that type of nigga who just sat there and watched weird shit like this happen. You know what I'm saying? I never, I never just watched. I just never could just sit there and watch these motherfuckers really try to finesse people and keep these niggas in delusion. You know what I'm saying? They play in your face, nigga. Like I said, man, you can't trust none of these motherfuckers, man. It's like you. It's like they want to be like you. They want to be your friend, but they then they when you when you start feeling like, hmm, I know who I am, a person. They get mad, you know. And it's like all they they done, they done got all these people out the paint now at their old ages. What they gonna do now with WWE? You know what I'm saying? It's like it's wild because it's like that female who was saying that shit. She said, she said, yeah, he made me whoop the whoop, and then. He, he said you fired. He said, I'm like, damn. Like, I, I seen some crazy. I seen I seen this video on TikTok. It was some weird shit. This black dude, I guess, he was trying to get this bonus or some shit. And he did the unthinkable. Gave some nigga a sloppy toppy. And the nigga busted all on that nigga's face. And the nigga started recording. And he had nothing all on his face. And the nigga was like, the nigga was like, you gonna have any money? He like, nah, I ain't got no money. And he's trying to chase the nigga. Nigga, you got a nut on your face. What are we talking about? Nigga, that's nasty. Is it? Nigga, you're, you're down bad, nigga. And you're going viral. You're down bad, nigga. You let a nigga record you while you got nut on your face. And you got nothing doing some crazy shit on some money on. You down fucking bad. So that's like that shit, man. This girl, she jumped, got forced with McMahon and done with it done. And... That nigga said, ha, oh, bitch, you fucked up. Nigga, you had sex with an employee. Nigga, yeah, you don't do an employee, you goofy. What the fuck are you talking about? And she, I guess he fired. It's, 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 like, damn, man, you know, that's, that's tough, man. That's a, that's a, I guess that's the way not not have to pay niggas they money on. But shit, I'm like, bro, you like, man, this shit be wild, man. You know what I'm saying? They be trying to hide this shit hush, hush, and secret type shit. But, hey, that shit be coming out, man. They be trying to have this shit hush, hush, hush. But I like I always say if that was a black man, they would have been a child to take a nigga out. You know what I'm saying? But it's just man, this world we live in, man, is 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 you know, they got this they got this system, you know what I'm saying, where they try to keep everybody in delusion. But once niggas start waking up and realizing like, hey, hold on, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on wait a minute. We see what's going on, man, we see what y'all doing. And we come together, man, it's over. It's up and it's stuck. It's up and it's stuck. You know what I'm saying? So I hope y'all Really been paying attention to this man, man, business, man, man. Like I said, man, I used I, I used to watch WWE too, man. I I I ain't going I ain't watch it on my own, you know. My stepmom used to watch it, so I started watching it. I'm like, man, okay, I'm I'm, I'm used to watching like, oh WWE is lit as hell. WWE is fake as fuck though. You know what I'm saying? I started just realizing that the more I watched it, I was like, damn, WWE is fake as fuck, you know what I'm saying, it's, it was entertaining for a good minute, but after, after I realized, I'm like, man, I'm not gonna watch this bull crap no more, these niggas not even getting, not even throwing real punches, these niggas stomping on the ground and, 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 and acting like they hitting niggas, like, bro, we ain't gonna watch this shit no more, so I stopped watching it, but it was entertaining to see Undertaker and John Cena and 
and, and Randy Orton and all the other niggas, you know what I'm saying? And uh, Mark Henry, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, crap, it was good. And the Rock, nigga, it was, it was cool watching these niggas, but it was Friday Night Smackdown and shit, but Ray Mysterio, all the motherfucking shit, you know what I'm saying? But I stopped watching that shit, man. It was, it was entertaining, though, but just to see how this nigga... Getting caught up at 90 years old with a billion dollars. Nigga, how you get caught up in, with a billion dollars? Nigga, that's wild shit, man, you know. But, hey, that's life, man, you know. You you, you do what you do, man, and, and sometimes it come back on your ass, man. So, hey, I'm what I say again, man, can't trust none, none motherfucking man. That's how it goes, man. You motherfuckers. Randy, that nigga, that nigga motherfucking Vince McMahon, man, on some crazy shit. Nigga had to resign from his job, man. Crazy, goofy ass shit, man. So I hope y'all enjoyed these videos, man. Share these videos, get it out. Make sure y'all like and subscribe, man. We've been posting videos, man. We've been turning up with y'all niggas, and let's go and get this started. Good and outside, quick game. Hey, Dad, you know that when we need to talk about this shit, be legendary. You know this is instrumental, you the engineer on it, so. Hold that everywhere.